Hi everyone, it's Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher. I am back with my floss tube number 15. It has been about five or six weeks since I filmed and that was not intentional. I actually did film a video last week that I could not post because I realized that the footage was unusable. And the reason for that is that something I haven't said up until this point is that I am stitching a model. So why do you ask? Would that make me not able to use my footage? Well, I filmed a one hour video and the model was sitting right here for the entire video. So obviously wouldn't want to post that and have the designer notice or I mean, God forbid I didn't notice until I posted, but all this to say, I did try to film a week ago, could not post it, had to give myself a week to recover from being so frustrated that I couldn't use the footage. And now I'm back filming pretty much the exact same video because I haven't actually worked on anything different since the last time I filmed. So here we are. I do have quite a bit to go through today. I have three finishes, five whips, a number of items for haul, I'm also going to go through what I ordered from Nashville Needlework Market. I don't have the physical items yet. They will be here this week, but since I'm unlikely to film for probably another month, I figured I would talk to you about what I got now since it's relevant, timely, etc. And then I have, what else do I have today? Giveaway winners and some plans and March WIPCO calls. So it's now been... 10 or 11 days into March here, but I have not yet started my WIPCO calls, so we'll go through those. And then I also have knitting, a knitting update, and I'm going to talk about books today. I haven't talked about books in a little while, and I'm not necessarily going to review books that I've read recently, but I have a pile that I pulled off my bookshelf that are things that I, I would like to read that I have owned for some time and just haven't gotten around to reading, or books that I started and then for one reason or another put down and have yet to finish. So that is not a thing I typically do, but it seems to have happened a lot in the past year or so. So I thought it might be interesting to go through that pile and talk about what I might read first. So with all that being said, let's, let's start with my finishes. The first finish that I have is Garden Sampler by Carriage House Samplings. I won't show you the picture because it's done so you'll be able to see what it looks like here but here is my finish of garden sampler by carriage house samplings and last video you saw this it was pretty close to being done i believe i still needed to work on the z and i had all the ground at the bottom so that ground is quite a bit of stitching. I think I did a little bit of math and it's somewhere in the ballpark of 1800 stitches. So after that last video, I did work on this probably for four more days, something like that. And this is being stitched or was stitched on 40 count ocean air by Fox and rabbit. And I did a Roxy floss company conversion that Hannah from Evertote made for me. And I don't have them here in front of me, but if you do want to stitch this and you're interested in that conversion, it's not available on the website, but it is available if you email and ask for it. So I wanted to share that because I've had a few people ask about it in the past. And the other thing I wanted to say here is last time I was asking if anyone knew what you stood for. In the comments, I was um, some a few different people let me know that it stands for Umbrella Palm, so thank you. And also someone else gently let me know that the list, the alphabetized list of plants and animals and um, other vegetation that's shown here is in the chart. <laughs> it's on the back side of the front cover of the chart and I just don't think I looked at it. I think I tossed the cover to the side and was just looking at the chart itself. So there we have it. And if you decide to stitch this, know that the alphabet is listed out for you. So I would like to get this framed relatively quickly, which for me can be, you know, up to six months, but we did just repaint our upstairs. And so we did our kitchen, living room, hallway, entryway, dining room, and bedroom. 
and this office has not yet been painted, but I have a lot of blank wall space now. And cause I took down, we took down everything that was on every wall and had them spackle and fill everything. So it is a blank canvas for me to cover with cross stitch. I believe garden sampler I would like to put in the kitchen along with a couple of other things I've finished in the past, like My Home in the Garden by Hello from Liz Matthews. Maybe if I think to, I'll put a photo of my finish there, along with Coffee and Eggs, which is from The Artsy Housewife, and that is a current work in progress for me. I feel like those all kind of are fun, happy kitchen vibe. So that's the thinking. The next finish that I had, this was in my mind long awaited. This is the 2023 Holiday Countdown by Evertote. Uh, with Modern Folk Embroidery and Roxy Flosco. I apologize for a little bit of the glare is the wrong word, but the transparency of the fabric against the window, but it is starting to become a nicer day today, so I wanted to leave the windows open. But this is stitched on 40 count mm, speculas? No, Turtle Dove from Roxy Floss Co. And I used all the called for 25 advent threads. I had only probably two or three of the days of stitching based on the chart and left to go before I finished. So when I finished something else this month that I'm about to show you, I picked this up and it just took me a day and I got the finish in. So here it is, one more time. I'm thinking, I'm not sure what I wanna do with this. I'm thinking I might turn it into a project bag it feels like it would be a fun, like smaller size project bag if I add like a panel of some kind off to the left. I don't know, I gotta think about it. But I have not yet ordered the 2024 holiday countdown box. I do intend to do that. I'm just trying to spread out the spending given that National Needlework Market just happened and it looks like they haven't yet sold out. So fingers crossed, but even if I wait a month or so, I think I should be okay to get that. The last finish I have is a project you have not seen before. So this was a part of my haul and it is the Drawn Thread Welcome Spring Kit is what I purchased. Here's my finish. I'll show you. I love the spring version of this chart. I think it's so pretty. It has those satin stitched eggs who are really fun to stitch as well as the flowers. I just love the variation on the thread on the L. So I had ordered, or I have ordered in the past, autumn, Christmas, and Halloween, and finished and fully finished those three. So I have them rotating on a sign and I wanted to uh, add to the seasons. So here we have spring. This is stitched on, they're all stitched, the kits on 30 count, antique lamb's wool, which I believe is a Witchell fabric. And the kit threads are typically a combination of dinky dye and PI. I think those were the only two types of threads that were included. I, per I personally purchased the kits for these from the Drawn Thread website. I believe 123 Stitch has the charts, but not the kits, but they will kit it up for you. It's just much more economical with the silks to buy the kits. So from what I can remember, each kit is about 30 to $35 and they have a flat shipping fee. So to me, that's a pretty good deal for pattern, fabric, all the different silks that you need in the amount that you need them. And sometimes they come with buttons, charms, things like that. This particular one did not have any of those, but both Halloween and Christmas had beads and some buttons. So there we have that. That is my last finish for the month. So I had three finishes in, I think technically they were all in February. Uh, yeah, I definitely haven't finished anything yet in March. So not too shabby. I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the year, I'm working on bringing down my whip count a little bit. I'm feeling like pretty good about the progress that I've made so far. The only thing that I've started aside from my New Year's starts, but the only thing I've started since is the welcome spring sign, which I finished. So pretty happy with that. 
I'm going to move into my lips. I have five lips this month. Three of them are Christmas, which is a huge surprise to me now that I'm sitting down and looking at it. But I really didn't think I would get back to winter or Christmas stitching once I was not in the mood for them as of February. And somehow I worked on all three of my remaining holiday-esque projects in addition to finishing the holiday countdown. So make of that what you will. I don't know. Maybe I actually like stitching Christmas outside of the season. Last year leading into the season, I didn't even like stitching Christmas period. Now I'm already back to Christmas in February. I don't know. First of my whips. I'll stop yammering. First of my whips is Winter Moon by Plum Street Samplers. This is currently an exclusive through Country Sampler and I believe you can only buy it as a kit right now. I don't think that the chart is being sold on its own. And the threads for this are so beautiful. They are a mix of Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, and some DMC. They do send you all the DMC in the kit, but I noticed that I had most of them. So where I could, I pulled DMC that I had already put on floss drops and I'm just saving the other skeins. But this is being stitched on 40 count salt bush by Fox and Rabbit. And here's my progress. So this was one of my whip go calls for February, which is why I got to it uh, so quickly after the holiday. But I had done a very small start on this prior to whip go. I need to like stretch this out so you can see. I had done a very small start on this prior to whip go. I had only done a small amount of the white ground and some fence. And my goal was to finish half of the white ground and half of the fence, which I did. And then in addition, this was not part of my goal, but this fox, I just couldn't help but get those stitches in. And the fox is underneath a tree that is larger than what I have done thus far. Sorry about the glare. But I wanted to at least fill in the tree that was the portion behind the fox so that you could really see the effect. I love it. I'm especially loving the color that's used for the tree that I started stitching, which is Weeks Dye Works Juniper. It's not a color that I've used before. That is my first whip, having a lot of fun with this. I'm not sure when it'll come back out. I was thinking about my holiday whips and I'm probably going to prioritize Christmas at Hollyberry Farm this year. So if for some reason that gets done before the holiday season, then this will be my next priority. But I have a feeling that this one might not come back out until, you know, November or something like that. My next whip, which was my other whip go call, I don't have a printed cover photo for. This is Ocean Blue Stockings slash Sampler by Kathy Barrick. And I started this approximately two years ago. I started it when Chris and I were on our honeymoon and had not gotten back to it. I don't really know why because once I started working on it, as you do, I love it again. And I chose to do the sampler version of this one. So the straight up and down version versus the stocking. I was a little bit hesitant to do the stocking version because I wasn't sure if I would have the skill set to finish something like that. And I don't currently have a finisher that I know of or that I work with for those types of finishes, soft finishes. So I, you know, decided to do the up and down. Here is where I'm at. So this I'm stitching on 40 count Spectre by Be Stitch Me, not Spectre. I always get this one wrong. 40 count Lunar by Be Stitch Me, which is a beautiful mottled gray blue. I would say if you look at it in person, it leans more gray with blue in it versus blue with gray in it. But I liked that as it felt kind of like a stormy overcast sea. And let me get you closer because the white stitching is hard to see until you're up close. I had finished before Whipgo the entire top section through the clouds and I had done the sun and I had outlined two of the birds so my whip go goal that I set this month was to do some cleanup, which ended up being finishing filling in the clouds, 
filling in the two birds, adding the third bird, and then I really wanted to finish the ship. So I stitched that entire ship, which was just, just shy of 3,000 stitches. It was a big, big ship. And it also felt like the theme this month for me was white stitching. So you saw in Winter Moon, I did a ton of white ground. And then in this chart, I did an enormous ship full of white sails. But I'm loving the effect. I think the DMC that she chose are so like bright yet not, I don't know, like they're bright and happy, but they also feel like funky and folksy, which I guess is just Kathy Barrick style, but I'm absolutely loving this. And if you watch Elizabeth Ann can stitch her vlog at Nashville Needlework Market, I believe she showed some of Kathy Barrick's table. Was that Liz's vlog? I'm trying to remember. You'll see that Kathy, or you would see Kathy brought the stocking, the finished stocking of this to Nashville Needlework Market with her. And it looks amazing. So when this one is all finished, I think in my head, I would like to put it in a bathroom, but also is it weird to put stitching in a bathroom? Leave me a comment. If it's in a frame with glass, is it weird to put stitching in a bathroom or, and or will it damage the stitching if there's steam? I don't know. Tell me what you think. I'm curious. Okay. My next whip is another summery nautical whip. And this was not a whip hook haul, but I just wanted to work on it. It is once again, Summer Quaker by Leela Studio. And as you may recall, I have a measly start on Autumn Quaker, or I guess it's called Autumn is as Joyful. And then Leela posted an Instagram post a day or two ago. Um, I'll put a picture of it here. And it looks as though she is working on a winter Quaker. So in the past, she had done Halloween and Christmas Quakers in a different style of Quaker. And now she has been doing this, the full seasons with this framed Quaker style with like a larger center motif. So I don't know when that'll be coming out, but that'll definitely be a purchase for me. In the meantime, I am focusing on summer Quaker and I think I'll, I'll restart fall at some point. I love it. Just haven't been in the mood for autumn. These are the DMC. They're a little bit ratty because I've been working on this so much. I'm stitching this on 40 count hmm, Renaissance by Color and Cotton. And here's where I've gotten to. So I started working along the bottom. Last time you saw this, I had done the left top and right bands. So this time I think I took it out for maybe two days and I continued working on the green seaweed border in the middle. I did the large Quaker motif at the bottom left, a couple of the smaller motifs around it, like a fish, and I think that might be a crayfish or a crawfish or a shrimp. And then I started the other middle Quaker motif. I can't remember why I lost steam for it. I don't, I wouldn't typically just stop in the middle of a Quaker motif like that, but I think I just wasn't in the mood anymore. So I've worked on this quite a bit recently and I decided to put it away. I'm using, uh, I showed the DMC, but I'm using all the called for DMC on this one. At the beginning of the year, I think I said my goal was to have it done for summer. I think it's probably more realistic the, to think that this could be done in the summer. Um, the center section is enormous. It's well over a hundred stitches wide by close to that in height, and it's almost full coverage. So I don't know that it's entirely realistic to think I will have it finished and ready to be framed for, you know, July and August. Maybe I'll finish it in August and that would be fine. I think that is probably a piece that I'd have up year round anyway, maybe with or next to the ocean blue sampler from Kathy Barrick, maybe in a bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. And I have two more whips. My next whip, I'll uh, put a picture here. This is Christmas at Hollyberry Farm by Stacey Nash. I'm stitching this with my friend Jordan, the tattooed stitcher. And I didn't anticipate 
working on this this month, but I did. I'm using most of the called for threads and I'll talk about the exceptions in a moment, but here's my progress. I'm stitching this on 40 count, oh shoot, Ren. 40 count Ren by Picture This Plus. And I love this so much. What I did this month was the, mostly the house. So I worked on the windows, the dark brown in the windows, the toppers of the windows, and then I started in on the roof and the white fill-in, which the roof, I, Jordan had started stitching hers in like a diamond shape for the roof. And I think since then she has decided against that and is maybe stitching the roof as she typically would. I I was inspired by that and I decided to start stitching it on a slant. So you, if, I'm wondering if you can see this. The stitching for the roof is on a diagonal. And I love the effect it's giving and I'm really loving the white. Uh, it, I think the white is shaker white, maybe? Straw Bonnet, nope, <laughs> by Gentle Arts. So the changes that I'm making. Uh, one of the changes is the roof, which is why I wanted to point it out. I, rec I don't recall what the roof is, like what's called for for the roof, but I didn't have it and I thought it was like a little bit light, I believe. So I'm using Sable, Sable by Gentle Arts, which has this beautiful, is it zooming? Maybe not, but it has this really pretty, as you can see in the roof, like chocolatey to pale brown variegation in it that's working really well for me. And then for the reds, I believe the berries on the exterior, I'll show it one more time, called for was Mulberry, Gentle Arts Mulberry, and my Mulberry, I have two skeins of it, they both felt a little bit brown. So I'm using a combination of two other reds, both are Gentle Arts. One is Country Redwood here, and one is Cherry Cobbler. And together, uh, I alternate them. So for each border frond, I switch out the berries, not by berry, but by cluster. So, you know, this cluster is Cherry Cobbler, a little bit darker cluster is Country Redwood. And I'm really enjoying the effect that it's giving. So I will probably get back to this, I guess, sooner than I maybe anticipated. I keep wanting to pull it out. And my goal will be to continue filling in the house. You know, it's not a goal, it's just what I'm gonna do next is to continue filling in the house and to continue working on the border fronds. And then I think the last thing that I'll do with that one will be to do all the other motifs. So finishing the alphabet, writing in Merry Christmas. Um, there are some people, I think there's like a girl with a basket, etc. One more whip. The last one is also Christmas. This is what I've been working on for the past over a week now. So I mentioned to you that I'm stitching a model and I have been doing 200 stitches a day on it for the past seven weeks, six weeks. So it has approximately 11,000 stitches. I have about 2,000 stitches left, but to keep up with the pace that I need, I have to do about 200 stitches a day. Why that matters is because during the weeks that I commute to work, I I've said this before, I have about an hour drive, about an hour and 20 minutes if I have to bring the dog to daycare. I know. Um, and so it does take away from my stitching time in the morning or in the afternoon, and I've been prioritizing the model. So all that to say, I've had this particular chart out for probably nine or 10 days at this point, which is unheard of for me, but it's mostly because I haven't had time to work on it. So this is Stacy Nash again, Deck the Coop Pin Keep. Also, again, I've said this previously, but this is much bigger than it looks. There is quite a bit of stitching in this and I'm loving it. I am very close to a finish at this point. So I'm stitching this on 40 count Winter Woolens by Seraphim. I am using all of the called four weeks dye works. It's technically a Christmas palette, but it doesn't scream Christmas to me. So it's not unlikely that when this is done, I'll have it up year round. Here it is. 
there's a needle in the middle. That's the mark that you see. I stopped in the middle of a thread to take this off the cue snap and show you. But here it is. I am obsessed with the Little Red Riding Hood girl. The color of her dress is called Schneckly and the variation, variation on that is amazing. I am just loving it. I did make a couple of modifications to this. Also, that coop is filled in. There you go. With Weeks Dye Works grits, which I'm very close to running out of. I think I have maybe two or three strands left and I have quite a few snowflakes to add, so fingers crossed. But the changes that I made were firstly in the bottom. This blue section in the middle has a date. The date is 1870. Four. That doesn't mean anything to me and it doesn't say anything about it in the chart that I could find so I removed it and it's just blank and I think it looks fine. And then the woman, her skin is charted in uh, Weeks Dye Works Grits which is the same color as the coupe and that seemed strange to me <laughs> and so I thought I would try to have a more um, flesh tone similar to mine. So I went with, I don't even have it on, this, on the ring here, but I went with Weeks Dye Works Skinny Dip. And she's just, uh, now she's just a very pale lady instead of a ghost lady. So that is my progress on Deck the Coop. All that I have left is the vines and berries here and some snowflakes. And then I will be done. And I thought there was a possibility that I would finish this today, but with filming, editing, getting this onto YouTube, and then some model stitching, I don't know, I don't know that today is going to happen, but that's okay. Next time you see this, it, by all accounts, it should be done. So those are all my whips. I do have some hauls still, talk about what I ordered from market after that or as part of that. And then knitting, books, plans. Give, okay, I still have quite a bit to do. Bear with me. So, haul. I had not purchased much between beginning of December and beginning of February. And then I did place a few orders in February. So these are the things I have gotten thus far. Firstly, I placed an order with Cedar River Linen and Design. That's Jody. She is Jody of Trixie Tricycle as well as Cedar River Linen and Design. And she had new colors released for her linens. So I love her linen. I've used Overcast, Albarium, I think another one? I can't recall. But either way, I got two of the new colors. I got 40 Count Maple Bar, which is this lovely neutral with um, it's got kind of some grungy tones of like yellowy green with a lighter brown tan base. So pretty. Definitely a big old sampler of some kind is probably going to go on this one. I don't have any major starts planned. I probably will start some of my market pieces, but most of what I ordered is shockingly smaller. So we'll see for this one. And then this might be my new favorite neutral. This is called Spindrift, and I also got 40 count of this. And it is just a cool white, I wouldn't necessarily say it's gray. It has like a tiny, honestly, maybe it's my vision with the ring light here, but it almost looks like it has a tiny under hint of like lavender. Jody, if you watch this, and that's an extremely wrong description of your fabric. Let me know. But otherwise, I love those. I can't wait to use them. I have only worked on 46 count of her linen. The 46 count is lovely. I can only imagine the 40 count will also be amazing to work with, especially because 40 is my preferred count. And those are the two that I ordered from Jody. She also had a third release called Coffee Stain, I want to say. And I think Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts showed it in her most recent video and seeing it in person makes me want it even more. So I think 
next time I place an order with Jody, I'll probably replace my overcast that is currently in Marianne Cop. I'd like another piece eventually and a piece of that coffee stain. The next order that I placed was with Farm Girl Dry Goods. And I don't know that I've ever placed an order that was then packaged and shipped so quickly as this order, but I was very impressed with the speed. The first thing that I got was she had posted that she got a large shipment of R&R &R Reproductions Winter Brew. So I got a piece of a Stitcher's Quarter of 40 count. I don't know why I'm looking as if I didn't know that I bought 40 count Winter Brew. And let me take that out. If you haven't seen Winter Brew before, it's just a beautiful, cool, neutral and it is the called for color for Autumn is as Joyful by Lila Studio, which is her Autumn Quaker. I had not been able to get my hands on a piece, so I started it, a small start, on Zweiger Light Mocha in 40 count. And because I have such a small start and I was able to get this so quickly afterward, I'm likely going to restart Autumn is as Joyful on this winter brew, which is exciting. The other thing I got from uh, Farm Girl Dry Goods while, when I got that fabric was the next three Garden Club charts. So I've started collecting the um, uh, For the Birds series and the Garden Club series from Blackbird. I already have all of the Anniversary of the Heart charts. So all of those bigger Blackbird combined projects. I don't know what you would want to call them. They had maybe three to five of them over the years where you needed to buy, or not needed, but you could buy nine to 12 charts to make one larger chart. And this is one of the series that I have not yet finished kidding. So with that being said, number I have one, two, and three. Number four is Sweet Home, which this might be one of my favorites in the entire Garden Club series. I just love the blue. And then Butterfly Garden is five. And then Tulip and Lily is six. I don't have immediate plans of starting these, but I am trying to slowly kit so that one year for birthday or back to school, which I do plan to do again this year, regardless of how far I get on last year's or New Year's, I will start one of these eventually. Start probably this one first. The last piece of haul that I have in person is another kit from the Drawn Thread. So when I ordered Welcome Spring, I also ordered Welcome Summer. I'm not going to take it all out because there's just a lot of components in here. But aside from winter, I now have all of the seasons and have stitched four of six of the total charts. And summer is potentially one of my favorites. I love the birds in this one and the bee skep. And it has, a, this is how it comes. So I don't know if I've shown one of these before. It's got all of the threads and then the fabric. And this one does appear to have some small black beads, which are here, but they're a little bit hard to see. So, oh, I did get one more thing, which I never stitched, but I bought a PDF of, oh, what is it called? It's from Sub Rosa. It's a Valentine's chart. And... Katie of So Tattered stitched this, and then Jordan, Tattooed Stitcher, stitched this. So I purchased it like a week before Valentine's Day and just never got around to starting it. I think I got distracted by Whipco or other things, but I do have it downloaded. I probably will stitch it next year for Valentine's Day because I like it. Uh, I like it quite a bit. That's all of the previous haul. Now we can talk about market. So... I just think designers knocked it out of the park this year with market. There were so many things that I love and want to eventually stitch. I had a basket going on both Lindy Stitches and Top Knot Stitcher, which are the two places I eventually ordered from. And at one point, these baskets had, you know, 20 plus things in them. And I probably will buy most of those things eventually, but I thought I'd go through with you the things that I picked to purchase for now. And if I have any thoughts on why, then I'll, I'll share them. So the first thing that I purchased was Floral Etchings 2 from Heart and Hand. 
I did not have floral etchings one, so I also ordered that at the same time. I love these and I had wanted one or I'd had it in the back of my head, but once the second one came out, I thought that this would be so pretty, either stitched side by side, like all in a row in a long frame or stacked on top of each other. I think that in the finished sort of models that they have, some people stitch them individually as well, which looked really cool, but I like the idea of maybe doing a stack and having it be almost a square frame or something. The next one that I got is Home Sweet Home. This is by Shakespeare's Peddler, which is Teresa of Kitten Stitcher. Should be putting a photo there. She had her releases or her previews of her releases a little bit later than others, which is fine. I think she was just trying to get her models finished and I love everything she put out. So this is the only one that I technically have in a pre-order because I think it was one of the first shown on Instagram, but I also intend to purchase her, I want to say it's called Pretty in Pink, I'll put a photo here, which is a long narrow bouquet of I think roses. Absolutely loved it and she had some others as well that I like. Next up is Pollinator's Garden. This one is by October House, I think it's Fiber Arts. And this one seems to be very popular. I know Bridgen Museum Stitcher has already started stitching this one. It seems like a pretty quick stitch and I love the idea of a long skinny pillow. I have a piece, like a narrow long piece of 40 count vintage straw flower from Lakeside left over from Consider the Lilies. And I feel like this would be like a, a very good use of that piece of fabric because got to be something long and narrow and it can't be something particularly tall, which this meets all of those criteria. Next up, I got Spring House by Hello from Liz Matthews. I love everything Liz released. I actually already have a couple of those releases because I'm part of her Patreon, so they're already safely saved on my iPad, but Spring House was one that I purchased uh, during this market season and Someone kindly shared Pumpkin House with me last fall. They sent me a copy of the chart, so I have to decide which one I'm going to start first. And I also need to think about fabric pretty carefully, given that I don't know how accessible the call for is. And you really should probably stitch these, the two pieces of fabric with the same dyer so that the weave is the same and that it's easier to line up afterward. Next up, I got Dreaming of Daisies from Fox and Rabbit. I absolutely love this. I plan on starting this pretty much immediately. What I will say is that the center uh, motif, the personalization, um, or I guess the, the phrase that's there now, does not resonate with me personally. And I'm going to put in, I think I'm gonna have this be an anniversary sampler or like a wedding sampler. And so I haven't 100% decided what I want to put in the middle, whether it'll be Lauren and Chris and our wedding date or some other phrase and then put our initials and the year, TBD, but I do plan on converting this one. It It's charted in color and cotton. It seems a little bit difficult to get those colors from color and cotton. So I think I might do a conversion to Roxy Flosco with Roxy Flosco that I already have and or I'm gonna be there. I'm going to Stitch North at the end of April. So if I start this for my anniversary in May, then I'll have had time to go to Stitch North, get any threads that I need and start it a couple of weeks later. I have backstories for like every purchase that I've made. So hopefully this isn't boring, but um, I personally really like to hear about what people picked out and why. So I figured that I'd include this segment. I have two more purchases. So one is Serenity by Teresa Kogut. This is phenomenal. I don't know when I'm going to start this. It could be tomorrow or not tomorrow. I don't have the chart. It could be next week. It could be in a year, but I knew that I wanted it and it's big. It's colorful. It's just, it's perfect. I don't think there's anything else to say. Teresa also released a spring book that I love. And the more that I see it, the more I feel like I want it specifically for the front cover uh, 
I don't think it's a sampler technically. Maybe it is. The front cover, if there's like a blue vase with pink flowers, it's like a spring. It's so pretty. Maybe I'll have put a photo of it up. So that might be on the horizon. And then the last thing that I purchased is In Praise of Pollinators from the Blue Flower. So different from Pollinators Garden, which is the pillow. This is a very large modern sampler style from Jeanette and or Janine, excuse me, sorry, Janine, not that you watch this. And Laura from Lala D Stitches is going to be doing a stitch along that she's starting at the end of April, which is plenty of time theoretically for anyone who wants to do this to purchase all the materials and have everything shipped to them and be ready to go for a start. I have not yet decided if I'm going to start when everyone starts at the end of April. I would need to see where I'm at with progress and or finishing some of my other projects first, but it's definitely something I'm thinking about. And if you are planning on stitching this, then highly encourage you to go join Laura and everyone else who is planning on stitching that in the next couple of months. So that is all of my haul. And next up will be, I had two giveaways last month and I'm gonna share with you the winners. Okay, uh, I am future knitting Lauren here. I've already started talking about knitting, but I'm gonna insert this back into earlier in the video, which is my plans and my March WIPCO calls. So I had two WIPCO calls obviously in March. I do not remember the numbers right now, but I do remember the calls. So the first call I had for March is Coffee and Eggs by the Artsy Housewife. Again, uh, Carrie from Roxy Floss Co. has finished this and it looks amazing with the Roxy Floss conversion, which is what I am using. So here's that conversion. I made a few changes to mine. So I felt for me like the greens were a little bit soft and muted and I wanted them to be a little bit brighter. So I did switch out for Roxy Floss Co. Peridot and Wake Style Works Monkey Grass. I also felt like the pink was a little bit light or soft for me. So I switched that out for Roxy Floss Co. On Point. And I think that might've been everything I changed. Oh, I put in my, my own personal hair color. But let me show you my actual progress and we'll talk about what I wanna do for March. So I'm stitching this on 40 count Heartland by Picture This Plus. Here's my progress. Um, not progress since my last video. This is where it stood as of maybe my whip parade. And I'm thinking my goal for my whip go for March is going to be to finish the lady and I think add in the butterflies that are next to her. Can you see this? I'm gonna add in the other egg the butterflies and the lady. That seems reasonable. That's my first whip go call. And my second whip go call is Teresa Kogut, Come to the Garden, which I'm pleasantly surprised that this got called in March because it feels very spring-like to me. So that's appropriate. I have a very small start on this one. I am stitching it with the called for mix of Overdyed and DMC on Color and Cotton Love Letter. And this is all I have done thus far. So I'm struggling with what I want to do as my goal for this one. On the one hand, if I'm being smart and strategic, I should finish the exterior border because it's huge and I worry about the counting aspect of filling in a very detailed border and then realizing it's off. But the immediate gratification side of me wants to do one of these fun flower motifs, like a big one. We'll see which one wins out, but I will pick a goal and get to this probably later in the month. It hasn't really sort of called to me yet. I'm thinking once I'm done with Deck the Coop, I'm most likely to do coffee and eggs if I had to if I had to guess at my future intentions. Although who knows? So those are my WIPCO calls. In terms of other plans for the month, I think we have 21 days left in the month. I wanted to finish Deck the Coop, 
do whip go. I haven't, you may have noticed, I haven't been the past couple months working on my big projects. So I haven't put in more stitches on Pandemic or Hawk Run Hollow, and I haven't gotten back to three things by Moira Blackburn. And that is kind of intentional. I have been trying to temporarily deprioritize some of my big projects while I get work in or closer to a finish on some of the things that are more um, achievable this year. But I probably will have time in March to get back to one of those three. And currently I'm thinking I might go back to three things because it was my back to school start. I haven't touched it since September, which is a shame. And it feels very bright and happy in spring. So that will probably be what I do in March along with I have 20 days. It's approximately four projects for me. So two whip go calls, three things, and I'm going to leave some room for a start from market because once that market or two market orders come in, I think I'm going to have a very hard time not starting something. So those are my plans. Okay, giveaway winners. In my last video, I re-ran the two giveaways that I had started during Flossmas. And the first of the two giveaways was for this chart, The Lovely Dove by The Artsy Housewife. And I believe it's Carrie from Roxy Flosco is showing this, or is stitching this, and has showed it recently on her channel with Caroline from Evertote, which is Evertote Notes from the Workshop. I'll link it below. It's so pretty being stitched up. And I added in with this giveaway as well, the blue flower, Language of Flowers Dream. And the winner of this is Mary Hogan 9561. So Mary, if you're watching, please reach out to me. And for both winners, if I haven't heard from you by the next time I film, I will draw a new winner. So that'll be, you'll have about a month to watch this. Please email me at newhampshirestitcher at gmail.com with your preferred address, and I'll get these in the mail. My other giveaway is my sort of holiday-esque giveaway, and the three that I included here were Teresa Kogut, When Set a Place, Be Merry All by Lottie Da, and Stone Street Stitchworks, Peace and Goodwill. I feel like I just watched a floss tube the other day where someone started stitching this. I believe it was Michelle of Penny's Daughter Shares. So if you're interested in what that looks like, go check out her most recent video. The winner of this is Emmy Rose 22A. So Emmy Rose, if you also want to email me, um, I will get these out to you as soon as I am able. The previous giveaway where the winner had already contacted me, I did ship that out a couple of weeks ago. So she should have that at this point. So those are my giveaways. And I have two things left. I have knitting and some books to talk about. So let me grab my knitting and I'll be right back. Okay, for my knitting, I only worked on one thing, which was my half and half triangle wrap by Pearl Soho. I'll put a photo here. I've put it in in the past. I'm gonna try to be a little bit better with my knitting about giving more details versus just saying, here it is, I did 10 rows and then that's it. So I am knitting this wrap. First of all, I also wanna mention my bag because the more I use this, the more I love it. This is from the Scrappy Thread on Etsy. It is the perfect size. I typically have my entire shawl in here plus the skeins that I'm using. So I think at this point I've used probably two and a half skeins of yarn. I have a skein that's sitting in there and I still have plenty of space. I love the patchwork and how cute is this handle? I don't know how often she posts releases on her Etsy. I don't think it's super often, but if you're interested, be on the lookout for the scrappy thread. In terms of my actual project, I am knitting this with Chowgu needles in a size four which is 3.5 millimeters. And I'm using the previous side. Both of my uh, yarns are from Stress Knits Yarn. She is a home dyer who doesn't dye super frequently. This is her Copper Boom color on her favorite base. And what I'm using now is also her favorite base. It's called In My Hometown. Lovely speckled 
yellowy cream. And what I've done since the last time you saw this is I think I showed that I had turned the corner and was doing the second side. So I've started working on the second side of my shawl. Let me show it like this. It's pretty big. And I'm working my way back down to the bottom. So this is all done in short rows. I've been doing it in German short rows, which makes things a little more complicated because I'm not really following. It's easier to knit for me, but it's making it a little more complicated because I'm not really following the regular instructions. However, I did watch a YouTube video that shows some modifications that I've been using. So I've been using the German short row modification and then also have been slipping my last stitch to make like a prettier edge. And with this, there was a couple things I wanted to add, which is if you're going to do German short rows, you almost like you have to do a little more thinking in the front, but then once you're doing the second, like the back half, it's been very easy for me. So what I'm doing is for each row, I start it, I knit all the way to where I have the sort of double stitch that is the indication of my short row. And I don't even need a stitch marker anymore because all I have to do is resolve that stitch just by knitting into it, knitting the next one, and then flipping my work, pulling the stitch I just knit over to the other side to turn it into the two stitches as you would with a German short row, and then knitting back down the way. So when I was doing the first half of this, I did have to use a stitch marker for pretty much the entire time. And it's not the end of the world, but it's pretty, it gets annoying to be just be constantly moving the stitch marker back and forth, especially when you're turning your work and when you're in the lower rows and you're turning your work and moving the stitch marker like every 10 stitches, it gets annoying. So here's where I'm at. And I'll just continue working my way down. It's going to be a square. The one thing I did sacrifice by doing German short rows is that if you had done this with regular short rows, see how the um, the knit is left to right on this side and it's it's up and down here. If you knit it with regular short rows, it would look like you had just knit all the way across back and forth in two colors. So I'm giving that up. However, when I fold mine over, it's the same in both directions when I'll be wearing it, you know, folded over rectangularly. So I think that may be the most, I think that may be the most I've ever said about this particular project, but I am getting further. I won't say I'm closing it on a finish because I think I've done 80 of the 180 rows, but with this side of the wrap, every row gets longer. So the next row will be 81, 82, etc. And each row, because it's a short row, is double. So it's really like 160, 162, etc. I've been, at least for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to do like two to four rows a night when I'm laying in bed, depending on how tired I am. And that seems to be working for me. Cross stitch is definitely my primary hobby. Knitting is something that I like, but that hasn't at least yet taken over my life. So it's fine for me just doing a few rows of that at night. I'm hoping to finish that in the next couple of months. And then once that's done, I'm going to flip over to the other shawl that I was working on, which was a like knit along. And eventually I would like to use the yarn that I got in my advent calendar of yarn to do a blanket. So that's further down the road. I'll talk about those more when I'm thinking about starting them or if I'm finishing something. And that's it for knitting for now. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about today is books. I haven't done a book segment in a while. In terms of what I've been reading, I mentioned in the last video that I had read all three of the Crescent City series that have currently been released by Sarah J. Moss. I believe she's writing a fourth book for it. It seems like she's going to write a fourth book for that series there are some major plot like on uh, open plot lines I guess you would say and since then I have mostly been listening to some cozy mystery audiobooks I just listened to Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney this past week while I was driving to and from work I liked it well enough it's about a 
family, like a very dysfunctional family who reunites on like at their island home of the matriarch of the family for this matriarch's 80th birthday. And this is not a spoiler, but over the course of the night, someone starts killing members of the family. And so, you know, you're figuring out with the narrator what's going on and what's happening to the family. Um, it, it was good. I think that I overall, I liked the plot. I ended up being, you know, relatively surprised by some of the events that happen throughout the course of the book. However, at times I felt like the author relied a little bit too heavily on like very flowery prose and it felt a little bit saccharine to me. Like I just, I wasn't feeling some of the writing style. So that's a personal preference. If you like Alice Feeney, she wrote Rock, Paper, Scissors and some other books, then check it out. It, it was like a fun listen to, um, to, to, to do on my commute. So for that reason, it was enjoyable. And I think I have, what else have I listened to lately? Podcasts, things like that. But the books that I wanted to talk about that I have in front of me are books that have been sitting on my bookshelf. Like I own them, a physical copy, and I have either started and not finished or never started them. And so let's talk. Okay. The first one is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I bought this maybe last fall, started it. I think I've read like a chapter and got distracted. And the moral of, I think most of these that I've started and then put down is because I either went away for the weekend and didn't bring it or had to go to work, like was on site the following week and just didn't have time to read and didn't get back to it. If you're familiar with her, Susanna Clark um, wrote Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is a wonderful book that maybe has been turned into a film or a TV show. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, this is apparently a very strange but very touching book. <laughs> That's all I know about it. Um, I think people seem to really like this. So I want to get back to this one. The next one I got is The Fragile Threads of Power by, by V.E. Schwab. And this is the fourth and I think final book in the Shades of Magic series. So I had read the Shades of Magic series last year. And let me see. Yeah, there are three previously. Darker Shade of Magic, Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light. This is the fourth book. And my understanding is that it's about slightly different characters than the first three books. So the first three to me felt like a very complete trilogy. Most of the plot lines are tied up, etc. So when this came out, I was a little bit surprised, but it feels like a new character is going to be our, our narrator, our main character. And then some of the narrators and, you know, protagonists of the past will appear as like, you know, secondary characters in this book. And I, I do tend to like that format. So I have not yet started this and I would like to. The next one I have is, I don't know how to say her last name properly, but Louise Erdrich, Erdrich. And it is called The Sentence. And this I have read actually a third of it. And I genuinely don't remember why I put it down. But it, I really liked it like at the beginning. So this is about a woman who, I'll just read you a little bit of the back. Uh, a small independent bookstore in Minneapolis is haunted from November 20, 2019 to November 2020 by the store's most annoying customer. Flora dies on All Souls Day, but she simply won't leave the store. Tookie, who has landed a job selling books after years of incarceration that she survived by reading, must solve the mystery of the haunting while trying to understand, like, what's happening in her life, basically. Um, sorry if that was boring to listen to, but I didn't know how to properly describe this book. I have heard wonderful things about it and I think I just didn't get far enough into it to really like be grabbed by the plot like I haven't even gotten to the haunting yet <laughs> so I need to get back to this one as well okay <laughs> I, I have mixed feelings about this one because I bought it the second that it came out I love Anthony Doerr this is Cloud Cuckoo Land and I couldn't get into it I read, I think I've read a quarter to a third and it is a 
multi narrator like uh, the book has probably five or six different narrators in different time periods in different places in the world and it wasn't gripping me as quickly as his previous books have done so I put it down and I haven't been able to get back to it but I know how much like love and praise this book has gotten so I do want to give it another try essentially the primary story takes place in present day Idaho and then there's also 15th century Constantinople and also a spaceship and a couple other locations like I think there's also Idaho of the 1950s or 60s is one of the um, settings and I just struggled with this one so I'm gonna give it another try if you read it and you loved it or hated it let me know in the comments and the last one is a nonfiction book I bought this probably like four to six years ago this is The Body by Bill Bryson. I have read almost all of Bill Bryson's books. Uh, a Short History of Nearly Everything is like one of my favorite nonfiction books. I also have started reading, but maybe never finished his book At Home, which is about the history of the home, each room, what people did there, culture, modern traditions, etc. This is, as you would expect, about the human body. I had started reading it a number of years ago and I really like his writing style. So all of his books are nonfiction, but they're written in a very approachable, digestible, no pun intended, pun sort of intended format. And he's funny. So normally I would probably not read um, a book about human anatomy or the body or various systems of the body, but this was um, a fun, maybe fun's the wrong word. This was an approachable, enjoyable read when I started it. So I would like to get back to it at some point. I feel like this is maybe something that I would read in tandem to other books. So a fiction book, historical fiction, a novel of some kind, and then maybe read a chapter of this every so often as well. So those are the five books that are on my radar for upcoming reads. And I also am, I have one book, one, two audiobooks that I want to read or one that I'm halfway through, which is Tom Lake. And why am I halfway through? It's narrated by Mer Mer Meryl Streep. It's amazing. Or uh, she's amazing. The book itself is good so far, but I just haven't, I haven't finished it. This is every single book now. I think I've said I started it, but I haven't gotten back to it. I need to get back to it. And it is true of all of them. I don't typically start things that I don't want to finish. So got to go back to that. And then the other one that I intended to start, had it queued up and ready to go in my Audible and just never got to, was Demon Copperhead. And I've heard this one is amazing. Mostly I have held off on this one because I know it's going to be heavy. And I just, sometimes I, I don't want to do heavy. Sometimes I just need... The cozy mystery, the low stakes romance, the fantasy fiction, whatever it might be. So eventually I'll get back to Demon Copperhead as well. And with all that being said, I have been filming for over an hour. I had considered doing a parade today of all of my unfinished finishes. So I have a pile in my closet. I have a rail in the closet in my office that Every time I finish something, I iron it and it goes on the rail. And I yoinked that pile out of the closet last week when I was filming. And I did finish an unfinished finishes parade at that time. But I have already been filming for over an hour. So I don't think I'm going to include that today. I think maybe I'll do that next time. Especially now that I decided to talk about my market pre-orders and all my books, which were not segments that I had filmed last week. So that at least felt new for me today. Okay, I think that's everything. Thank you if you made it this far for watching, commenting, all the things. I really appreciate it so much. I try to like and reply to comments as much as I can after videos are posted. You may notice if you leave me a comment you know, three, four, five weeks after the video is posted. It takes me a little while to get back to you, for which I apologize. But I will hopefully be 
posting maybe one more video before I go to Stitch North. So I'll be leaving for Stitch North on April 25th. It's March 10th. I really hope I managed to post a video before April 25th. I think I can. That feels doable to me. And I'm very excited for that. That will be my first cross stitch retreat. And a lot of my friends are going. So I'm very much looking forward to that weekend and all the talking and all the stitching and all of the shopping. I will probably need an extra suitcase. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you next month. Bye.